What do you do when someone hands you a city to beautify that's already, well, beautiful? You adjust your perspective. This city was sent to me by my good friend, Choose Red Mage. He says he worked on it around 2018 and it's already quite stunning, especially for its time. So we are going to adjust from beautifying the city to amplifying the beauty that's already here. Consider the next so many minutes an advanced city skylines beautification video. And if that's not enough, I've spotted some places in this city that would be great for showing off some technical cities bits that I've picked up over the years. So stay tuned, it's going to be a ride. This is New Corneria. This is Remage's save from 2018-ish, and I love what's going on here. You can see he's got a lot of like little satellite towns come together, and flying around this, it is just so much fun. As far as the beautification goes, I want to dive right in here to kind of the central area and do one thing, but first, there is a problem that we need to fix, and that problem is well shown right here. The switch from the old prop and tree anarchy to the new prop anarchy and tree anarchy has made trees that show up everywhere and I want to show you how to fix that if you come across this problem. The easiest way I have found to do so is to use move it and grab just buildings and nodes, grab kind of the area in question, press the up arrow or any arrow on your computer and control Z. You have to do this while anarchy is off, tree anarchy is off, and it will remove the trees from where the buildings and the roads are. Now, those trees still exist, so as far as like a lag factor goes, you can see those trees are still there. If you want to, you could take them with Move It Mod again and delete them and that will help your tree count. But for the sake of just getting trees and not to show up on top of buildings and roads for this video, I'm going to go around and do this everywhere. Now that the trees are all tidied up, let's dive into the first change I would make. Now keep in mind, I already feel like Red Mage has done such good things with this city. I already think it's beautiful. These are going to be what I would maybe do to just take it up that last final touch. With the exception of minute and super tiny detailing, here's some changes I would make. Right here in this big populated high density area, I think this shoreline is screaming for a key wall. Red Mage has used a key wall somewhere else. Ah uh, yes, up here in the Belmont district, he has this key wall here. So we know he had them available and knew how to use them kind of thing. So I would definitely be doing so along here. I'm putting this in fairly messily, I would say, uh, just to get it in. I, as you guys probably know, if you've been around a little bit, I am that person that will just throw what I need to throw down, down, <laughs> and I will adjust it later for about four hours with Move It. So of course this video won't be four hours long, but I will show you what it ends up looking like. And I'm wondering where to end the key. I don't think it should go all the way down here. I feel like it more so makes sense where the high density is. So I think I will end up ending it right beside this parking lot. So let's put it there for now and we will get that looking the way that it's supposed to look. Now, this little guy, he actually does make sense to be sitting on top of the key wall, right? So let's grab this node and just scooch it back a little bit. It's gonna jitter the camera, I'm very sorry. And I'm also trying not to interrupt this too much, right? Red Mage did tell me that I can do pretty well whatever I feel is best with the city, and so I'll keep that in mind, but I don't want to interrupt things he's done too awful much. Another technical tip, when you are adjusting networks, so this is roads, paths, key walls, you can hold down the Alt button with Move It and see that green line that comes up? You'll get used to it as you use it more, but it just creates nice curves uh, there. Do you see how it snaps to that curve? It is, of course, finicky like all things are in this game. 
but once you're more used to it, it's a really great tool to use. Over here, I think we are going to do the best ending to a key wall that exists in City Skylines, and that is hide it under a highway. That's looking so much better already, in my opinion. And over here, I actually wonder if we can just have it go, yeah, like right along parallel the parking lot. I think that's just fine. Let's grab this last node here and I will have it kind of sink into the ground. We'll put some bushes and trees there. And that is the placement of the key done. And because it's 2022 and not 2018, let's actually use the sea walls that are from the newish content creator pack instead. Now that we've got a key wall in, we can also take it yet one more step forward and we can put a bunch of props on it. So I have selected a few to show you what I'm thinking. Now I was originally thinking about using these. These are vanilla and they've got like the tires and I, if I understand correctly, they go over here to help boats like not bash up against the key, but We've got this cement barrier anyways, so or cement, I don't know, what is this, what is this made out of? So we're not going to use those, so let's close that tab. What we can put down is some life-saving buoys. Now the waves are making our camera go up and down a bit, so I'm going to put those over here, and I find it a lot easier just to grab it like this and bring it up and down as we need to. Turn it a little bit and I'm gonna use control to, yeah, you know what? It's gonna be a big old pain to get it where I want it to go, but I think we can manage. What I'm looking to do is line it up with where this intersection or whatever of the fences is. I think that looks good. And so we can do that in a few places, right? Now, if I copy pasta it, how is it going to be with the height? We might have to adjust the height as we go, but I'll put it at a few of these. And I would say it makes sense to put these buoys near the more populated areas, like where there's something going on by the key. So this has the ferry stop, right? So it makes sense. Maybe people will think it's fun to jump into the water and then we have to go and save their lives. So we'll put a few of these down over here and then we will have to get all of their heights adjusted correctly. Just to show you while I'm doing this, grabbing the prop with move it and going to terrain height isn't going to work here because the terrain height is actually like way down there. So we have to kind of do each one manually. Next, after the buoys, we can put down a couple fairy info signs because hey, this is a fairy stop. I am, so they're double sided. Let's put one right over here. And then what is this? Just a fairy sign. Oh, neat. I think this one can go a little bit farther away from it so people can like see from both the sidewalk and the ferry that, hey, there's a ferry here. Because, you know, if you're on the ferry, you need to know that the ferry is here. So we're gonna put it about there. Along with having these buoys in some places, we can also build up kind of a classic combo here. I'm going to do so on this side. For one, because it's easier, but for two, because it kind of makes sense. Now I'm gonna be really fussy though and try to line it up better. So we will do one bench, maybe two benches. Wow, <laughs> one lamp and a bin nearby. Let's do this bin. I like how it's covered. So let's grab another bench and put it on the other side of the lamp. Try not to let the waves get us seasick. And I'm gonna put that combo just kind of all along the key. For these, putting them down and then moving them to terrain height is going to work a lot better because at this back end of the key, we are pretty well at the same terrain height. So this will be a much simpler process. After putting all the props down, a flower bed here or there. I've done pretty well everything I would do to this shoreline specifically. There's definitely some things we can do as far as putting trees behind it, but that is a future step in the grand plan of advanced beautifying. Is there anything I've missed? 
that you would add to this? We have got this shoreline updated all the way over to this parking lot. And how convenient that we are here at this parking lot because parking lots are the next item that we are going to cross off the list that I've made to start to do some extra beautification around here. Let me pause the game and we are going to grab all of these parking spaces here. Ah, uh, right. This is a whole thing. Uh, the switch between the old prop and tree anarchy and the new prop and tree anarchy has really kind of made things <laughs> difficult. So uh, that looks like it's worked okay. I'm going to get rid of a couple extra ones. I don't think this is Red Mage's fault in the slightest. This is just a consequence, I guess, of switching from the old prop and tree anarchy to the new like prop anarchy and tree anarchy. So it's all good. It's just a fun challenge in between. But what I'm going to show you guys here, something that is possible is rather than using these parking spaces, these are the ones that Red Mage had in and you just plunk them in, right? Rather than using these ones, you can get these ones that have this little space in the middle and you put them in just like you would have put in the other parking spaces. But do you see how it says it has a four meter curb? I, I assume the M is meter there. You can then go to these curbs here, the four meter. It says grass version and vanilla grass. Let's try this grass version. And you just draw it along. Now I'm going to grab every node here and control H it to that node height. Yes, and it works just fine. And then I like to grab these nodes and hold down the Alt key and scooch them so that the curve matches like where the last end of a parking space is. And they just, they snap in so nicely. The mod maker has done really well here. So I will grab the nodes once again, get them to the correct height and do the scooching of the end nodes. And then this gives you a little bit on the inside of the parking lot to decorate. One thing I really love to put in here is parking lot lights. So we're going to scroll down. I was kind of looking through this before and there is some street lamps that Red Mage has. These ones, these are so cool. Definitely not intended for a parking lot. This one actually looks like it's more intended for a parking lot. Oh no, they're they're oddly shaped. But so yeah, these are a little these are a little strange, let's be real. But I really love them. So we are what I'm going to do. I'm going to do this a little bit cheeky. I'm just going to like throw in a whack of them, right? So that looks pretty good. The two on the end are the two that I'm being precise with my placement. I'm putting it right in line with the parking line space <laughs> duber, uh, this guy on the side. And then I'm going to grab all of the props and use move its line up objects tool. And then I'm going to use the to a terrain height tool. Love that. And then we can copy paste and try to get them in line as best we can, like so and to terrain height. And now when we take the game and we bring it to nighttime, how much cooler does that look, right? So I'll be doing this in a few of the parking lots, but there's more to do here first. I would like to get a short short bush, a small bush, I think with the assets that Red Mage has, this one's going to be the best one. Now, where is it going to let me put it? I'm just going to place it down there and then use move it again to get it into place. And what I'll do is I'll just put three in between these two lights and do the same thing. Now, are these, these are trees and do the same thing where I line up the objects and then copy paste them along. That adds a little something to the inside of the parking lot, doesn't it? I'll let the game play so that we can start to see people parking in here. And the last thing I would do around this parking lot is hope he does. Red Mage has ploppable concrete, the madman in in like a good way. <laughs> and um, I'm going to place it trying to figure out the best way to place it but we're just gonna do this for ease and that gives us this little area just to put a little something together so if we go statue what is this statue of chirper oh my goodness we are absolutely using that somewhere that's too fun but here this fits really well doesn't it so let's put this like so we can grab oh i've already got benches selected. So I think I would put them on the side 
And then we can take some plants and put them around here as well. Now, even with just a couple props placed, no decals or anything fancy, it just feels a little bit more lived in and will feel even more lived in once people start parking here. Before I get to filling in these other parking lots with similar styles, I want to just go back along this front pathway and show you that I did have some time earlier and I just kind of filled in behind this key wall. I put in some more planters and some benches on the other side along with the trees and rocks and I think it turned out pretty good. This train station and these parking lots is a great place to show you the next tip that I have for the extra beautification. But before we get to that, I just want to come over here real quick to this little scam park that Red Mage has going on. I know Red Mage and I know how much he loves scam parks, but look it, I have never seen a little park like this making an income in the five digits. Absolutely incredible work, Red Mage. I'm, I'm genuinely very impressed. Back into the parking lot area. I, we have to scroll in to see it, but I've done the things here and they all are looking fine. Now, I think this node might be a little bit high. Just watching this prop. There we go, starting to look a little bit better. But these trees on these roads are the original, what are, what even are they? Are they like oak trees, I guess? They're not, they're not pretty, we'll say. And now that we are many years later, Red Mage would not have had access to this, just to clarify. But we can do the whole thing where we take a tree and we just click on the road and it changes the trees on the roads. This is a vanilla feature. There are, two types of trees that I would typically want to do this with that we have access to. So we've got this cypress tree that Red Mage would have downloaded and then we also have the young linden tree. It even says in its tooltip that it's great for streets. Do you have a preference? I would love to know. Here's the secret call to action. We'll do it really early in this video. We are 18 minutes into the video. Let me know in a comment below if you are still still here at this time, you too can be part of the 18 minutes gang. But also let me know if you would be more inclined to use hashtag Linden gang or the hashtag Cypress gang. I think I'm going to end up using a mix of the two. For areas like this, like especially this industry area where I've put in this wee little park here, by the way, I use the cypress trees in there, but I I think I'm going to use the young linden trees in here because the cypress to me almost screams like it's too fancy. I don't know, it's too posh, right? But then coming over here, maybe it would make sense for consistency's sake, we are going to keep the young linden over here. But what we can now do is we can go through the city and we can 
upgrade Rhodes. Oh, now that one is going to have a tree right in the middle. So let's actually move his little walkway just to be around that tree. But we can go through the city and we can upgrade all of these roads to have our trees of choice. Small thing to note here because we are basically removing the old oak trees with this new vanilla tool. If I were able to add a mod to this list, I would be adding the BOB mod, the Bob mod, so that I could bob out all the old oak trees and all the old kind of shoddy vanilla trees from the original buildings as well. We have got some bigger and substantial changes to make to breathe some fresh new life into this city but before we do I want to show you that just something very small like leveling out the land or tidying up the land along the riverside even if you don't want to put a key down because it won't fit can really add to the view when you're flying by so I am tidying up these riversides before we dive into a little bit more of the big stuff and a couple big technical tips Time for a bigger change. Over here, we have this unique building, Old Market Street, and it's a gorgeous building. And he's got the path going through it from one side to the other, and I think that's phenomenal. However, I also think that every house around it feels out of place. Oh, look at this. Let's go and do our trick. Every house around it feels out of place because this is super European and old and these all look very modern. So we are going to draw a district as far down as here for now. I'm not sure if we will also do the other side. And we are going to call this, leave a thumbs up if you're enjoying the video, sure. And what we will do is go to themes, enable theme management for this district and let's put in European suburbia. Now all of these should, if I speed up the game, they should start to disappear? Maybe not. If I start deleting buildings, hopefully new buildings will grow in with the right theme. Here's another city skylines trick. When I press left click on this building, I'm going to hold down left click and I'm just holding down left click and it's deleting everything, but it's not deleting any trees. It's not deleting any roads. It's only deleting buildings and it's only deleting buildings that don't have like the pop up like this. Are you sure you want to delete it? So it's a quick way of getting rid of a lot of grown up buildings at once. You know, I wasn't thinking that I was going to originally, but now seeing these build in and having them like right beside this over here, I think I will also bring this theme over this way. So let's make one more district and we will call this district the and subscribe district. Leave a thumbs up and subscribe and we'll do the same thing. I could have, of course, just brought the same theme over, but this way I get to do more YouTuber stuff. Now, while we wait for these to zone in, we are going to come up here and attack this oil industry area. But first, I want to take advantage of this city having a problem that is so difficult to solve and so difficult to find an example of. So let me show it to you and let me show you how to fix it. Over here in Florence Square, we have got ourselves a certified death wave. You can see all of the death happening, but we do have death care over here. When we click on this crematorium, have you ever had this happen to you with a service in City Skylines where you see the number of vehicles of whatever service it is, fire, police, death care, and it just flickers between two numbers over and over and over again, and it never seems to go up. Here's what's up. There is a building out there somewhere that has a person waiting for transport, a dead person waiting for transport that this crematorium is trying to send a hearse to. But what happens is as soon as the hearse goes to leave the crematorium, it figures out that it can't get to that building. And there's usually two reasons why, one of two reasons why. Either the building has been moved or something has happened with move it where it's like just far away enough from the road to not be able to receive services, but still not give you that funky notification that tells you it's too far away from the road. Or it could be, and 
this is what's happening in this city is that you have designed your roads or used traffic manager to make that building inaccessible to this service. Looking around here, Red Mage has done some things with TMPE where he has forced the cars to go into certain lanes. I'm just deleting them as an example. These ones probably aren't the problem. If we wanted to figure out what this problem was, we would have to go through everywhere in the city and kind of delete these one by one and go and check and see if that fixes the crematorium in question. Instead, what we will do is we will close out the game, uninstall traffic manager just to get rid of them all and open the game again. So you can see it's still happening here. Reloading the game without TMPE, you can see it's not down here and it is not in the mods list. I don't know where T is in the alphabet. And we click on the same crematorium and hearses in use are four out of seven and it's not doing any of the flickering. And I've checked the other services as well. No flickering to be found. So deleting traffic manager has in effect deleted all of these little places where the traffic has been directed to behave a very specific way and somewhere out there, there was a place where that wasn't okay. And it was causing service vehicles not to be able to get to a certain place. This is also a great opportunity to show you one more really easy City Skylines trick. So four out of seven, so seven is the important number here. That means there's seven hearses available. If we go into our budget and we up the healthcare budget by only 1%. The nighttime doesn't matter, but it's habit. So just 1%. So that is not costing us much money at all, right? We can go back in and we have one more hearse in use. So quite often when I'm playing and I want to make full use of my services, any service that uses a car to get somewhere kind of thing, I will up by just 1%. So garbage, medical, fire, police. Now you know. You saw, of course, what I did with the oil area I grabbed. So this rock pattern that's got the surface rocks and these are vanilla, these are assets. This came with the map, I think. And so I just copy pasted it. I think that is a great way to get some nature in your city without things really sticking out and looking funny. And yeah, I just put kind of, I put rocks everywhere. You guys, you guys saw it happen. Coming over here to the 
cargo depot. This is my go-to sort of thing when doing a cargo area is you just fill in an area nearby with surface painter and store all the things. Get like a little office area for the people running the show. And this is some pretty easy starter detailing to do. Throw down some decals, make it look as messy as possible. And that is the oil industry. As we come back out this way, we can see that the European suburbia houses have zoned in. And when we come over here, I think they do fit in a whole heck of a lot better with this unique building. So I think this was the right choice. Probably my final touches in this area would be to grab some trees and just fill in the bits around it to make it feel more full and lush and that sort of thing. Let's make another bigger feeling change. And we are going to do that right here in this area. And then we'll see if it feels right over here as well. But I love this kind of general view of the city, right? This is stunning. However, this empty field of kind of weird looking grass sticks out like a sore thumb. So let's make it look good. Weird how a beautification video would have that in mind. I don't know. So this is oil. Okay. so. So what we're going to do is actually something that I have said before that I don't love. And it's that whole thing where you make farmlands out of the different textures. So we'll use oil and probably farming, right? Let's, can we make this a little bit harder of an edge? It's going to be difficult to make it square. I think once we fill in the edges of this with trees, you'll see what I'm talking about. I think it'll look pretty darn schnazzy. So we are, I'm basically just trying to make little square patches. Uh, what am I doing here? Fill this one in. Now let's actually just get the farming in to have the comparison going. And can we get oil ore in? Uh, ore looks pretty funny. I'm not going to mess with the theme. I That's maybe too much and I honestly don't know. I think Red Mage said that the theme that he was using he wasn't in love with. So I'm just going to, I am just going to keep it with what it is. But I think if we mess around with this enough, we'll get what we're looking for. There's our basic shapes. And then in order to keep the like tree forestry feeling going that we have, the tree theme of the city, I guess, I'm just going to take trees from nearby and copy paste to them. And we will see what that does for the way that this looks. Farm fields are in and I did decide to do it over here as well. I think it looks fine. Zooming in this way once the props come into view, I added a couple solar panels make this area feel used and then just a wee small area where I can see the farmer coming out here and sitting and enjoying the view because I will probably say this over and over again to Red Mage but this is my favorite view. This is it right? This is the point of the game. This is a skyline and it is a gorgeous one. Speaking of favorite areas in Red Mage City, I want to next head over here to his university, New Corneria University. He's done so incredibly well with this. The layout of it is perfect. And he's done a little bit of detailing with the trees and the flowers coming across here. I think some of them are a little funny with the prop anarchy. Again, changing up being funny, but that is perfect. He's done great. There was one one thing I wanted to try to tackle right here, and I'll try to tackle it with you rather than just speeding through it, but I may have to do the old pause and calm myself because I have a sneaky suspicion this is going to be kind of frustrating, but you can see what I'm doing. All of these big heavy cliffs, I think it would make sense for these to have retaining walls because this is a university, right? It's a built up area. They built it like on purpose, man-made, that kind of thing. So the question is going to be how, oh, I see. So this path goes down. So why don't we grab these buildings, that path, and actually let's control H them up to that height. 
or the other option is to take that as well and bring it down and that will help us when we do our key wall back here so i think that looks okay and then we can take this node and go up rather than down and that looks fine now without having the invisible networks i won't be able to get eliminate this sort of little thing that you see down here but i think even with the resources that we do have i think we will be able to make this look pretty good so that one's in where can we go next let's try over here next so i'm gonna go in as far as here i'll probably have to adjust it with move it right and then come out this way and come around like so now let's get this node up to where we want it first which is going to be like that and then here can we bring this node down without it being really awful looking no so i think what the want is going to be instead is to find a place where we can get it to go into the ground and look like the transition is natural so that actually works pretty well so there we've got a little bit of a retaining wall there i am so tempted to try to landscape at the front of it let's see what we can do oh can i have <laughs> i did the wrong thing so let's make this look the way that we want it to look as well smooth that out okay so that that looks a little bit better and then up here okay now down here what can we do yeah i just like to have the wall showing as much as possible so it really looks like it is serving a purpose right i think that is fine this looks a little funny yes okay good yes how many more of these are we going to end up putting in here? I think quite a few. I definitely want one up in here, so let's put that one in next. Wow, isn't that, isn't that quite a gem? Okay, let's see what we can do with this. Get that down to an appropriate height. This node, yes. Now, what's going on here? This, I think, just has to be a heck of a lot higher, right? Okay, so let's zoom right in and get these to meet up nicely. So we can just pretend that they're not overlapping there. And that actually, let's bring this height to the same as that height. And then over here, we can start to have it go down. I think that's fine. And that's fine. Now we landscape around it to make it look like it is serving more of a purpose. That is looking so much better. I think we could almost even put one more here and even down here. I pictured I pictured quite a few of these. Is it odd to have so many? After a little finagling, this is the result of the key walls around the university. I think it looks pretty good. In places where I couldn't put a key wall, I've used the age old trick of just hiding the ugly with trees. I'm sure you are familiar with that. In here would be a great candidate for things like detail Detailing, putting picnic benches, places for the students to sit and study. Of course, could use some rocks, but I'm not going to just sit here and detail the entirety of Red Mage's city because the goal with this series is to show you different things in different cities that you can then take and use in your own cities. If I was going to do more in Red Mage's City, I would spend some time getting detailing in like this little prop pack that I put together that has the benches and the bushes behind it. I would just copy paste that in quite a few places. I would work in areas like this with the train station to put down advertisements for people walking by, newsstands, places for them to sit. I would take what we've done up here with the rocks and the cargo type stuff and I would apply it to other industry areas. If we zoom way back here, here we go. He's got some more industry happening back here. I would try to make it make sense, like the map maker put these rocks falling off of this mountain kind of thing. We could have that filter in to the ore industry for sure. There are endless landscaping opportunities to either add a key wall if you want to keep the sharp drop or slope up the area if you want it to look a little bit less sharp. And areas like this where we could just fill in with trees and rocks. 
We can also delete trees that are in the middle of the highway. I hope I've shown you something new with Red Mage's City. I tried to tackle things that I haven't tackled in previous Beautify Your City videos. Do you have a spot in your city where you feel like there's just something missing but you can't quite figure out what to put there? Let me know. Find me in Discord or on Twitter and give me your city save and I might just tackle your city in the next video like this. I would also love to hear in the comments below what you would do differently. Did I go overboard with the rocks? A huge thank you to Red Mage for giving me his city. I feel like I could spend days, weeks maybe doing this, but we are out of time today. On screen right now is a video that's kind of related, but a little bit more panicky. I chose a completely random place in Canada to kind of park my camera, and I tried to recreate the scene in front of me within just 30 minutes. If you want to see how that turned out, click that video, watch it next. Be sure to subscribe if you enjoy this type of content and gang, I will catch you next time.